Hello, my name is Louise McCluskey and this is the second part of the e-lecture on tension members and here I'm going to be covering angles with welded end connections, angles connected by a single row of bolts and then I'm going to go through a master series example at the end. So for an angle connected by its larger leg, the effective area may be taken as equal to the gross area. So now that we know that, we're going to go through a quick example here. So this is a different se um, section that we're going to use from the one that we used in the part 1 of this lecture. So we have a 1, 2, 5 times 75 times 10 unequal angle, un unequal angle, and it is welded by the longer leg. So we need to work out the design tensile resistance and compare that to the design axial load of 500 kilonewtons. So first of all, we can work out the design plastic resistance. So for that, we need to use the gross area, and that is 1920 millimeters squared from the section table. The yield strength is 355 newtons per millimeter squared, and that's from the product standards, and that's because the thickness is less than 16, and we're using grade S355 steel. The partial safety factor recommended by the UK National Annex is 1. So putting those values in then, the design plastic resistance works out at 681.6 kN. The design ultimate resistance of the net cross sectional area is equal to 0.9 times the net area times the ultimate tensile strength over the partial factor gamma M2. Clause 413 part 2 of EN 1993 part 18 says that for an unequal angle well the best larger edge, the effective area may be taken as equal to um, it may be taken as equal to the gross area. So here the gross area is 1920 millimeters squared. So we just set that to the net area as well. So now that we have the net area, we can determine the ultimate tensile strength Fu from the product. Sorry, now that we have the net area, then we need to determine the ultimate tensile strength Fu from the product standard. So that works out as 510 newtons per millimeter squared, and the partial factor from the UK National Annex is 1.25. So just putting in those values, then we get a design ultimate resistance of 705 kilonewton. The overall tensile resistance then is taken as the lesser of the design plastic resistance and the design ultimate resistance of the net cross sectional area. And in this case, the smaller of the two is the design plastic resistance, and that's equal to 681.6 kN. So, just the last thing that we need to check then is to see if the resistance is larger than the design axial load. So, the design axial load is 500 kN, and our resistance is 681.6 kN, therefore, this action is acceptable. So, then this next section it's dealing with angles connected by a single row of bolts. Now, in most cases, angles are connected by one leg only, and this can introduce eccentric loading. For a single angle in tension connected by a single row of bolts in one leg, the effective net section, A net effective, is used in place of the net area, A net, in the equation NU equals A net FU. A net effective is dependent on the number of bolts and the pitch P1. So here's a table showing you how to work out the effective net area, and you might notice these beta terms, so we've got beta 2 and beta 3, and so we need to We'll use them in the equations, and I'll show you in a few slides where you get those values from. Now here's a diagram showing some of the terms that you might need to use. So we have E1, E2, pitch P1, and the diameter of the hole, D0. So here are the equations. You'll need to work out the ultimate resistance of an angle connected by a single row, single row of bolts. So we were referring to EN 1993 part 18, because this is to do with joints. So you'll have these three equations, so 311, 312 and 313, and you will decide which one to use depending on the number of bolts that you have. So here's um, how we get the values for beta 2 and beta 3, so we need to refer to table 3.8 of EN 1993 part 18. And beta 2 and beta 3 are reduction factors, and they depend on the pitch of the bolts, so we need to work out if the pitch is less than 2.5 D0 or greater than 5 times D0. And then we can read, read off the value of beta. And there's a note below the table, and all that is telling us is that um, for intermediate values of P1, values of beta may be determined by linear interpolation.
So we've gone through the main points about angles um, connected by a single row of bolts and now we have an example to go through. So in this example we have to check if a 150 times 75 times 10 unequal angle in grade S355 steel bolted with a line of 4 22mm bolts at 125mm centres through the longer leg is suitable to resist a design axial load NAD of 500kN. And just at the bottom is a sketch of that arrangement. So first of all, um, we can work out the design plastic resistance. So for that we need to use gross area and that's 2170 millimeters squared from the, from the section tables. The yield strength is 355 newtons per millimeter squared. So we get that from the product standards. And partial factor recommended by the UK National Annex is 1. So the design plastic resistance works out as 770.4 kilonewtons. The design ultimate resistance of the net cross-sectional area is equal to the effective net area times the ultimate tensile strength over the partial factor gamma m2. Now we're using four bolts in this scenario, so the effective net area is equal to beta 3 times the net area, and the net area a net is the gross area minus the lines for lines for bolt holes. And our bolt holes are 24 millimeters wide, and the thickness of the element is 10 millimeters, so a net then works out as 1930 millimeters squared. And beta 3 can be taken from table 3.8 from EN 1993 part 18, and that works out as 0.7. So our effective net area works out at 1351 millimeters squared. And now that we have the effective net area, we can determine the ultimate tensile strength Fu from the product standard, so that is 510 newtons per millimetre squared, and the partial factor given by the UK National Annex for gamma M2 is 1.25. So just putting in those values in, we get a design ultimate resistance of 551.2 kilonewtons. Now the overall tensile resistance is taken as the lesser of the design plastic resistance and the design ultimate resistance of the net cross sectional area. And in this case, the smaller of the two is the design ultimate resistance and that's equal to 551.2 kN. The last thing that we need to check then is if the resistance is larger than the design axial load. So the design axial load is 500 kN and our resistance is 551.2 kN. Therefore, the section is acceptable. So just before I finish this lecture, I'm going to fly through some examples using multi software so you can see how e easy it is to analyze numbers, change sections, and use auto size function. So here in this example, we've set up a truss using master frame, and that can be set up quite easily. And we're going to analyze one of the members. So before I do that, then I have um, just assigned some section properties. So all of the members of this truss or 150 times 75 times 10 on unequal angles, grade S355 steel. Um, so we can select the steel design option from the design menu. From the integrated design menu, we can choose discontinuous strut and tie members. So we're dealing with a tie, so a tension member. And there are many options that we can change. So for example, you could choose to have the short leg in contact, contact but here we've just decided to choose the long leg to be in contact and then here is a close-up of the results and the tensile resistance has been worked out at 499 kilonewtons the force in the member is 49.2 kilonewtons so the section has adequate resistance although it may be better to choose a smaller section since resist the resistance is extremely high compared to the design load so this is uh, one of the main advantages of using the software so we can easily change the section size and see the updated results immediately. Especially in masteries, we have this function to auto size, so it's, it's very useful. So previously we had been using a 150 times 75 times 10 on unequal angle in grade S355, but after selecting the auto size option, master series has selected a 65 times 50 times 6 unequal angle in grade S355, which is smaller and therefore more economical. So that's one of the benefits of using software. So you can auto size members for greater efficiency. So this is the end of our session um, on tension members. And remember that you can refer to the handout which covers it covers all of the main points. Well, thank you for listening.